Hello everyone, Triple S here and welcome finally to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy on the Xbox One. Yes, it's finally out and I'm going to put up a little thing here to say the time for you to skip forward to when I actually start the game because YouTube got rid of annotations which you could have easily just clicked on but no, so just skip forward because I'm going to have a little bit to say about this game and other stuff Ace Turner related, so. But this is not the first time I'll have recorded the first game, second game, and third game. It's not even the second time. Well, technically it's the second time for the third game, but not for the other two. Because originally I recorded them years ago in terrible quality. With just terrible microphone and stuff, and it's just horrible. And then I started on the second game with uh, the layout that I have for like Apollo Justice, my playthrough of that, and Miles Edgeworth. And I did get a ways into the third game, Trials and Tribulations, but I never finished it. And then I started doing a no commentary playthrough, which was a pain to do. So I kind of just stopped doing it and never even reached the third game. Got almost to the end of the second game. But now it's the Xbox One. It's totally different. It's like a full screen image instead of like two screens and stuff. And I will say, like I've said in my Apollo Justice and Miles Edgeworth playthroughs, if they port Apollo Justice or Miles Edgeworth to the Xbox One, I will not re-record them because that's just too much of a pain, there's no point having two almost identical playthroughs of the same game. Even if it's, you know, full screen and HD and all that stuff, it's still it's still the same game. However, I will be recording Miles Edgeworth 2, the fan translation for the emulator version of it. I will be recording that if, miracle of miracles, they decide to translate it and port it to the Xbox One, I will definitely re-record that game just to see if they change the names, the dialogue, stuff like that. Just to see. And also I'm hoping, against all hope, that they port at least Spirit of Justice and uh, Dual Destiny's... God, I forgot the name of that game then. It's my second favourite game, technically. But uh, hopefully, yeah, they do port them to the Xbox One as well, because the 3D graphics will look amazing and stuff. It'll be awesome. And then maybe, down the line, I don't know, like... The Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright, but that's barely a base turn game, that's more Professor Layton than anything. Anyway, new game! Uh, actually, I should show you the options. Because there's some stuff here. You can actually turn the music off. That's not a setting they've done before until I think it was Spirit of Justice. It was a Spirit of Justice where you could turn the music off. Obviously, I'm going to keep it on because it seems to be fine. Sound effects on. Text skip, I've got that on just in case. Uh, screen shake. On vibration off because who needs that? Transparency so you can see through the text box to the image behind it and stuff. It's all good, it's all good, it's all good, so let's go. So, Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, the first game. With episode one, the first turnabouts. Let's go. Ah, oh, the familiar starting music. <sighs> Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. I've got to find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. I'll make it look like he did it. The sound effects were a bit off then in the dun dun dun. Anyway, August 3rd, 9.47am, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous. Right. Oh, here. Oh, hi, Chief. Ooh, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, that's a safe, Phoenix. I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you. And your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favour. A favour? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yep. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. It's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life, everything, it's all over! Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death, despair, oh! 
I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna die! Sounds like he wants to die. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Larry! Larry but Snake! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I ain't afraid to die. What? What's wrong with... What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I... I'm finished. Finished! I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who... Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Huh. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's a story. All about how my life got turned upside down. No, my first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy that uh, they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying. When something smells, it's usually the Butts. In 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10am, District Court, courtroom number 2. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. Prosecution is ready, Your Honour. The um, defence is ready, Your Honour. Aha! Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Uh, yes, Your Honour. I'm um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your clients. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honour. Mr. Wright. Given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honour. Uh, handshaking. Eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honour. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Ooh, I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait. Uh-oh. No, no way! I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name. Oh, the victim. Uh, uh, of course I know the victim's name. I um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the right bumper to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Well, if we go to the court record, which is a bit different. Uh, Cindy. Stone. The victim in this case. A model. She lived in an apartment by herself. And ugh, Winston Payne over there. He's 52. Goddamn. And these... She's two years older than me, is me, F.A. He's two years younger than me. She's three years younger than me. God damn. Okay, so... Me, F.A., Cin Cinder Block, or Cindy Stone, Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... Poisoned, hit with a blunt object, strangled. She was hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. I should probably be able to do this without looking at the guide that I have open, just to make it easier on the recording so I don't get stuck. Or if I do get stuck, I'm going to look at the thing, but i played so many times. Correct. You've answered all my questions. There's no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honour. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then, first the question for the prosecution. Mr. Payne? Yes, Your Honour. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the Thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see, the court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Right, be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. 
Evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the right bumper to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything... unfortunate. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Aha! Uh -huh. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were, getting, we, were, uh, we were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet. Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Um... Did they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls. Or seeing me. Ever. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honour, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport adds to the court record. Ah, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yep. All the men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support, to, to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Wait and see what happens. Stop him from answering. Stop him from answering. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof. <gasps> Dude, Nick, what do you mean irrelevant? That cheating she-dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Uh, well, did you or didn't you not? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh, oh, he went. What do I do? Have him answer honestly, stop him answering. Have him answer honestly. I know, I'll send him a signal. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was there. I went. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, ma'am. So, like, I didn't see her. Oh, God. Winston Payne, I hate. Oh, I remember your voice now. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? Prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery, he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order, order in the court. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call his witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's uh, building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Sawit. Sorry. Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, well, yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Witness testimony. Witnesses accounts. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1pm. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. 
Oh god, these earlier games had testimonies with like six million statements in them. I'm so glad they simplified them in the in the in the later games. Sorry, I can't speak properly. Ah, Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? You wanna at the time of the murder there was a blackout in the building. How the phone's supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mrs. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout record added to the court record. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? Alright, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key, it's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with the right bumper. Then point out contradictions in testimony. You got it, Mia. cross examination witnesses' accounts. Okay. Where am I in this guide, anyway? So, we've got to go to statement, all the way to statement 9. God damn. I remember the time exactly, it was 1pm. I should be able to just skip. Oh, thank God. I'm so glad this game lets you skip statements like this, because in the original game, at least on the emulator uh, thing, whatever you want to call it, I don't know, uh, you weren't able to skip until it's, you've gone through it at least once, the testimony at least once, like this. But I can skip, so that's great. Unfortunately, I don't have like a counter like they have in Dual Destiny Spirit of Justice showing me which number statement I am on, so that's a pain. So I just gotta phone. I went. Okay, I remember the time, and we present uh, time of death 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. That's a bit odd. I'm gonna have to get used to controls and stuff. I, I, had to, I had to figure out that I had to press Y to stuff and the. Anyway, you found the body at 1 p.m. You sure? Yep, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, nobody to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Oh, that. Oh, uh... This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sorrett, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1pm? I, uh, well, I... Gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and the whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? Witness testimony at the time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1pm. I'm sorry about the misunderstanding. Okay, I know how to counter this one. Huh, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a ticked program. Mr. Wright, you may cross examine the witness. Right, you know what to do. I've got this one. Okay, here we go. I'm pretty sure we've got to go to the TV one and present the blackout report. You see, you're gonna find a body at the time. I say the time's probably going for the television, okay? We present the blackout report. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said that there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. 
you couldn't have heard a television. Or a video. Ah! I... well... Ah. The defence has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sorwitz? No, I... I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite! Ah! Wait, I remember now. Mr. Sorwitz? The court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. M my apologies, Your Honour. It uh, must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sowitz. Let's say your testimony once more, please. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? Guess that would explain it. The defence may cross examine a witness. Gladly. Okay, I know... Oh, let me just amend my guide here. I will be doing this a bit. Because it's in a notepad thing. Uh, so, there. so we've got to go to statement 3 about the murder weapon. So... So yeah, the murder weapon, the killer used it to hit the victim. We sent the thinker because at no point does it say it's a clock it just says statue we don't know it's a clock but yeah so present that wait just a moment the murder weapon wasn't a clock it was this statue now how is this supposed to be a clock what you with your objections and your evidence just who do you think you are just answer the question Mr. saw it hey I I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honour, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? Do I? Yes, I do. Your Honour, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. If the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Ah, indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment, knew the victim, he went into the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah, prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the courts. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Sowitz, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. But, but, but what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Just look at the vi vi witness's face. What am I, Russian now? The witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... That... 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 I never! Look, I... What? I heard... No, I mean, I saw... saw ah. Take that, Phoenix, right? Shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! It was him, I tell you. I saw him! He killed her and he should burn! Burn! Give him death! Order! Order in the court, I say! Your Honour, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defence's claims. Mr. Wright. Your Honour, you claim the sound the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this, and I think it through carefully. Your Honour, the sound Mr. Sowit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply examine the clock's batteries, ask the neighbours, try sounding the clock. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honour, I have the clock. Ask the court to listen very carefully. 
I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mrs. Sowit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mrs. Sowit, try to talk your way out of this one. Ha! <laughs> you forgot one thing. Uh oh, what's he talking about now? While it may seem like that clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately. This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sowit. Ha! <laughs> I've come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all sly. Ah, I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sowit. I don't know why they didn't have, like, an objection for her or something. Mia, I mean Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. That doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right, right. Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes. Wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course! There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! <laughs> Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. It is the passport. From Paris. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. Apparently, everyone knows that. Yeah. When it's 4 pm here, it's 1 am the next day there. The clock wasn't 3 hours slow, it was 9 hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sowitz. Or should I say, Mr. Did it? Uh. Oh, yeah, I, I, oh, dead. He died. That's it. Uh, order, order, I say. Well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness. He, uh. He was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honour. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honour? I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defence so quickly. And find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honour. At this point, this is only a formality, but... This court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts... Not... Guilty! Yay! Oh, look at that confetti. And with that, this course is adjourned. We did it! Yay! It turns out that Frank Sowit was a common burglar. He poses as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day... When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr Sowit let himself in to do his dirty work. When he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sowit had grabbed the nearest blood object he could find and smacked her dead. 
August 3rd, 2.32pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Woo! Still can't believe we won. Right, good job in there. Congratulations! Th thanks, Chief. Here we're all to you. Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. Never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good. Wait, no. I mean, bad. Bad, bad, bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy Wind is gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was, uh... Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. <laughs> Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. Um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, ever. Let's celebrate. Dinner, movie, my treat. Ah, oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey. Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You, you made this. Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you just want to cry? <laughs> Larry? Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathise with me, it's okay. I'm not just sympathising, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? The thinker. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she travelled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take travelling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made you feel a little better. Right. I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realise things change depending on how you look at them. People too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. In order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right. Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall I be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah. Part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks. She flirted with Phoenix. And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Unless you count the clock he gave me it. I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the centre of another incident. And my promise to tell the Chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. The end of the first case! Ah, oh, the first turnabout done! A brand new episode has been added, and achievements as well, the first turnabout. Oh, thank you, also showed up on my laptop. Clear episode one of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Uh, so if I click, it auto saves. Uh, I guess save. Are you going to auto play the next? Oh, that's a lot of save files. Wow. I'm going to pick that one. Is it going to auto do the next? Okay, I don't want to click back and. 
Ah, no, it's auto playing the next. It's auto playing the next. Okay, no, we're good. Stop there. Okay, there we go. Uh, that took a while to have to get to the point where I could actually exit out of that case. But so next time, we'll do episode two, Turnabout Sisters, which has one of my favourite pieces of music in it. But it gets even better when you hear it. I think it's in the second game. They do a, like a remix version of it, and it sounds even better. But yeah. So next time. Episode 2, Turn About Sisters, and I have something else to talk about in terms of the guide that I'm using, but we'll get to that. So, thank you all for watching, I shall see you all next time. Good. Bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, and let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you decide to subscribe to the channel, that would be amazing, and ding that bell to be the first to hear about my new videos. Thanks again, and I shall see you all next time. Good. Bye.